been like a month off, so just gotta take away at things. First things first, I'm Emily, um, and I will be your, your math guide uh, this term. So we're gonna do some pre-calculus uh, and we're just gonna chip away at, at some, some material. I managed to copy and paste the wrong time twice for the course. Of course, we start at eight and we go till 9.50. Uh, which uh, I had a couple of people contact me and say, ah, that doesn't work for me. So 10 till 1150, that's a different class for me. So anyways, we are at eight, we are now, here we go. Um, oh, in case you're confused, a little bit about me, uh, my iPad is showing 910. That's because I'm in Edmonton. Um, my husband is with the military and so, but he's actually uh, on a deployment in Latvia right now. So he won't be back for, for six months. Uh, but here I am in Edmonton and uh, yeah, things are snowy. I'll show you around. Why not get to know each other, you know? Ooh, snowy yeah. <laughs> and here is my trusty, Thank you. Companion. So she'll be there sleeping. Oh, so cute. <laughs> All class. She loves it when I when I just talk and talk, then she really gets to sleep. Oh, <laughs> so. She's so adorable. <laughs> yeah, she's a good girl. But um, yeah, so uh, I've been teaching at the college for I don't know, four years now. Uh, I was teaching at UBCO before that. Uh, statistics is more my jam, but of course uh, I did an undergraduate in, in math. So of course math is fine too. Um, and just so you're aware, in case I kind of um, get a little bit weird, I am dealing with some vertigo. So things are uh, a little bit shaky right now, but I'm getting over it and it's getting better. So uh, hopefully it's not, not gonna be a problem for that much longer. Okie dokie, artichoke. Let's see here. So I posted the course outline. I'll have to change the, the times on there. Um, but I also, I guess I can show you on the, oh. Uh, just before the break, I got a, a new iPad and I'm just kind of, it's different from my old one. So I posted all the, the kind of key information from the course outline. I posted on the Moodle page so that you just have it. Um, and that's why I managed to screw up the time twice, uh, but I changed it. So first things first, we're going to be doing assignments, of course, uh, and I, I say daily because, uh, I mean, kind of depends on how we move through the material, uh, but one for each section. We'll have a little assignment for each section. So you'll be working on a lot of assignments um, for, uh, let's see here. You know what, it doesn't auto mute people, which I feel bad about because isn't that your worst nightmare to realize you're not on mute. Here, now I've muted everyone. I got to figure out that setting anyways. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to be doing assignments uh, and I'll talk more about assignments in a little bit here. Um, we're going to have two tests. I've already picked the dates. Uh, mostly February 11th I wanted to have because uh, it's right before reading break. So then you can be all math free uh, for reading break, which um, I used to appreciate as a student. So uh, hopefully you do too. Uh, and then we'll have test two on March 30th. So make sure that those dates work for you. Uh, of course, they're gonna be during the class time. So if they don't, then, um, then let me know as soon as you can and we can figure something out. Yeah. Uh, of 
course, there's my email here. Sorry, I don't have a pointer on the on the interweb here. Um, but you've got my email, you should be able to just, I don't know, quick email something through Moodle. You guys know how to contact me. Uh, I also give out my cell phone number, which uh, if you want to text me questions, that's totally fine. Um, so if you need to get a hold of me, I'm, I'm usually, you know, if I can't answer, I won't answer. Uh, so don't feel bad about texting me. Um, if I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping. So don't worry. Uh, my ringer is never on. So that is kind of a problem sometimes, but, uh, but for the most part, it's okay. So uh, you do have my cell phone number, so you can, you can text me. And uh, the reason I do that, and I know that's kind of a little bit weird, um, but if you're working on a problem, then usually it's just easier if you're able to just take a picture of what you're working on um, and then send it to me. And then I can work on you know, the same problem or kind of show you uh, where you went wrong. And then I can send you a picture back and it's just easier. And, uh, and it doesn't have to be that formal email, which um, for some reason, it just takes me longer to write an email than a text. You know, a text, you can just be like, hey, what's going on? I did this, it's not working. Anyways, so feel free to text me, email me. They all go to the same place. They're just on my phone, so it uh, doesn't matter to me. All right. Uh, I've set my office hours. They're on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, just kind of beginning of the week um, for me. Uh, 12 to 2, okay? Or if that doesn't work, then just let me know and, and we can set up a, a time to meet. And of course, those, those office hours are here in, in this room, in this Zoom room. Um, okay, so if you haven't already, I've got the link to our lecture videos on YouTube. Let's just go there, see if it works. Hey, it does. Um, 87 subscribers, fancy. Uh, <laughs> not that impressive when you think about, uh, I think I've been posting on YouTube for two years already, maybe three, I don't know. Um, so not that impressive, but uh, this is where I'll post all our videos. Um, they don't get posted right away because they take some time to, um, to process, but I, I try to post them as soon as I get them. Um, so I'll try, I'm not a very good YouTuber, uh, but I'll try to make a playlist so that they're not all mumbo jumbo with all my other courses. Any at all. Uh, all right, so, um, <laughs> One new subscriber. Hoot, hoot. Uh, so I do keep an eye on the chat. It took me a while to get used to last term, but um, but I think I've got the hang of it now. So I just have it open. And uh, so if you do have a question, uh, you can just put it in the chat if that's more comfortable. Um, <laughs> sometimes if people turn their microphones off and, and speak, I get a little startled because I'm used to just talking to the screen, but um, either way is fine. Okay, so today, and what I, what I want to do is, or what I haven't done yet, is I need to kind of rearrange the, the topics that we're covering. So that's why the rest of the weeks are, are hidden, uh, but they'll be set up in a similar way. So at the top, I'll tell you what you should be doing to prepare for, uh, for this week. And then uh, for each Tuesday and Thursday, I'll tell you which sections I anticipate going through. Of course, uh, those things change, but uh, usually I fall behind a little bit. But uh, I've left some wiggle room, so don't worry. Um, so today we're doing our introduction. That's this. Uh, and then um, 
it will start talking about real numbers. And uh, once I get you know, the rest of the page set up, then um, you'll see that we'll spend quite a bit of time in chapter one. Uh, and chapter one, it's uh, just called fundamentals in the textbook and, and that's kind of annoying, but uh, we're just laying the foundation. So everything that you uh, should bring into the course, that's what we're gonna bring up in chapter one. And so I want to spend a lot of time there uh, because then we'll just feel so much stronger for the rest of the course. Okay, we will be using uh, what's called WebAssign. If you haven't used it before, it's just an online uh, homework platform. Um, and it does include the ebook. So you don't have to buy the textbook, uh, but you do have to buy the WebAssign. And with the WebAssign, uh, you get the ebook. So, so that's kind of nice. If you want to buy, um, buy a textbook to have a, a hard copy, fine. Uh, that's totally great. Uh, let's see here. I don't know if this is the current edition. It looks like this. Um, it doesn't really matter. If you get your hands on, uh, on uh, a pre-calculus textbook, by James Stewart. James Stewart is kind of like our, uh, he's our calculus rock star. Uh, so, uh, so we use Stewart for both pre-calculus and definitely for our calculus courses. So we like to use the same author for both uh, to kind of set you up for calculus. That's what pre-calculus is all about. So um, if you wanted to get your hands on, on a physical textbook, there might even be some in the library. I don't know if access to the library is possible, but anyways. Um, <clears throat> now let's see here. Um, <clears throat> but the ebook is included uh, in your web assignment. Now you get two weeks of, uh, of a free trial for web assignment. So until you're sure that you're going to stay in this course, right? Just use the free trial uh, because you'll have to to sign up. Uh, it'll keep all your all your assignment marks and everything, and it'll just transfer over if you if you purchase the access. So don't worry about that. It'll just save everything um, to your account, even if it's from the free trial. Um, <clears throat> so. It didn't show up very large here, but they changed the setup. So I don't know if this is what you guys are seeing. So here, let's see here. Let's stitch this and go to web assign. Okay. <clears throat> now, what you're going to do is you're going to click enter class key. So up at the top uh, right hand corner, you're going to go enter class key. Okay. And they change the login. So of course, um, hey, Emily. Yes. I tried, I went and did all this, like I did that, doing the key and stuff, and yeah. I got, it didn't get me to a sign-in page, but I put in that number mm -hmm. you provided, and it just, it just wouldn't go any further. It just kept saying the login, so I don't know did what's... Did you use this number? Yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. I don't know what was going on, like, and then I tried the, logging into thing and it threw me to an error page. So I don't know. That is weird. So it didn't used to look like this. It used to be red and, and whatever. So that's why I'm a little bit thrown off. Um, so if anyone else has troubles, let me know and I'll contact them and see what's going on. Um, but it'll make you create an account and then it'll get you to add the, 
uh, the course code, yeah. Uh, so here you're gonna enter a course key and that's where you enter okanagan.bc1445 0872. And that's how it should work. And then you hit register. I don't know if that's actually going to work. I'm a little bit weirded out because it actually used to look a lot better than it does now. So why would they update to something that looks worse? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> okay. So try it out, see what happens. Um, I'll make some notes here. Oops. All right. So at the end of each class, I post these notes. So here's where I kind of, uh, I write all my notes for you guys. Um, now today I haven't been making notes because it's all on the Moodle page already, but um, I'll post these after class, uh, so you'll always have access to them. So, so don't worry about, uh, you know, if, if your learning style is just to sit back and listen, then that's totally fine, because uh, you'll have the notes later. And even if you, you know, can't keep up, then uh, I try to go reasonably slowish, um, but maybe I'm speedy. Uh, so, uh, oops, hey, maybe I should have practiced writing, Ugh. Uh, week off, or not a week off, a month off. Uh, so welcome. Uh, for assignments, I say that as if my writing is usually good. It's not, it's not usually that good. Uh, so for assignments, we will use WebAssign. And um, the, the reason, so I know it's annoying to have to pay for, for, uh, for WebAssign and, and for the ebook, but um, one, it's a really good textbook, uh, really solid, um, just kind of walks you through stuff. Uh, and two, you'll have to use WebAssign in calculus. So uh, what we decided as a department is we said, you know what, let's just get everyone used to using WebAssign um, in pre-calculus so that they are comfortable with it for calculus. Uh, so for assignments, we'll use WebAssign. And here, just kind of make it look a little more fun. You have a free trial until I want to say January 26th. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's a few places where you can buy the access and sometimes it'll charge you in US dollars. So I would recommend just to, just to play it safe, you can buy it through the, the online bookstore and it should be 75, 74.99 or something like that. $75 Canadian is what you're, um, if you're not paying that then, or if it's cheaper then great, let me know. Um, but, uh, you shouldn't be paying more than that, okay? So purchase access through the bookstore. For 75 Canadian dollars, right? I don't, I don't want you to have to go and pay US dollars. That's not what, uh, what we should be doing. We've got a deal. So but you can just use the free trial until January 26th. Okay. So, um, 
<clears throat> let's see here. There's going to be an assignment for uh, for each section that we complete. So there will be an assignment. For each section. Okay. And just as a rule, what I do is I, I make all assignments so whatever assignments i give you i typically give you a week to do the assignments and then i just bump it till friday night so all assignments are due friday at midnight or 11 59 pm just so there's no confusion so uh i shouldn't say each all assignments are due on Fridays at 11.59 p.m. I'm usually at 24 hour time. Um, type a gal, 23.59. But people don't like that. Um, so just because the due dates don't show up on Moodle, I'm expecting you to keep track of, OK, it's Friday. Have I got all my math assignments in? Hopefully, so you can have your Friday night off. Um, but if not, you've got a fun Friday night ahead. Okay, so, um, so I just make all the assignments, they're always due on, on Fridays, uh, unless I'm trying to wrap something up before a test, but, uh, but I'll let you know. Okay, okay. so our, uh, what's it called? Our access code, or oh, course key. That's what it's called. Web assign. Uh, your first thing you're going to do is create an account. Uh, Web assign, I want to say .net. Let me just check. to click uh, enter, hmm. got to go back, enter class key. And then our class key is okanagan.bc, and this is all lowercase, okanagan.bc, and then I had it written down somewhere here, so I don't have to flip back and forth, 14450820. And that'll drop you in my course. Hopefully, I've already had someone, Wendy was having trouble, and that's not a good sign, is it? So, um, <laughs> how can I check? Log in. Hey, I'm already in. Uh, zero students. It is, hmm, that is so weird. 
enroll screen. It's annoying because it won't let me do it because it knows I'm an instructor. So, hmm. All right. I'll have to, the only thing I can think of right off, uh, off the top of my head is to make sure that this is a lowercase because I know when I, when I tried to get that screenshot, um, it auto corrected to a capital, but, it, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, okay, so that is probably something we have to deal with. I don't know how to solve it right now. <clears throat> okay. Uh, what else did I want to say? <laughs> uh, let's go back to the course outline. It's kind of my crutch. Uh, oh yeah, so I, I have office hours. We talked about that. Um, and we're gonna be using Stuart's pre-calculus. <clears throat> We're using WebAssign, okay. And so here, uh, like I said, chapter one, fundamentals, we spend quite a bit of time in here. And then, um, and then we can get rolling into chapter two, which is more on functions, uh, which quite honestly is a lot more of the same of chapter one, just uh, calling them functions instead, but it's okay. Um, and then we just kind of chug away, truth be told, I never get to chapter seven. I'll keep it on there like a, like to show off. We'll probably just get to chapter six, get through chapter six, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. Um, so um, if anyone else is trying the web assign, uh, trying to log in, I'll show the course code again, uh, or the class key. Let me know if you can get it to work or what. But until then, I'll just kind of keep keep going. Um, all right, so uh, oh, awesome. Thanks, Wendy. I'll have a look at that. Uh, once we're, once we're finished here, probably. <clears throat> Actually, I'm gonna check it right now because uh, Hey, so uh huh. Okay, so I'm I'm looking at uh Wendy's screenshot and it is all red and it is all nice looking. Whereas on my end it was looking like this. Let me see what this uh, what this link looks like. Hang on. Hmm. Yeah, it's coming up as that blue. Whereas I'm used to seeing the red, so that's that's good. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I guess um, I guess we'll have to stay tuned. Uh, seems to be. Uh, shouldn't say not working, that's not proper.
doesn't seem to be working properly. I will email the web assigned people. Because I don't know why mine is showing uh, mine is showing blue and your guys is showing the the red that I'm used to seeing. Anyways, let's parking lot it. We'll come back to the web assign. But that is our course key. And if you can get it to work, let me know but I don't think it's gonna work, not yet. They probably need to do something or I need to do something. It's usually me. Um, hmm. Weird, anyways. Okay, thanks guys for trying. All right. Oh, yeah, I was going through the course outline just briefly. So we do have these learning outcomes. These are skills that you are expected to walk out of this course with. Of course, we're going to cover more uh, that kind of feed into these learning outcomes. But at their core, uh, this is what you're expected to know. So I would say uh, learning outcomes at the beginning of the course don't make sense. Right, that's fine. You're not expected to know this stuff. Uh, but when you're studying for the final, for example, then, um, then maybe have a look back at these learning outcomes and just make sure that you, you have a good grasp of all these things because that's what I'm gonna be testing. So uh, the course evaluation, I've also put this on, your, uh, on the Moodle page so, so that you have it handy. Uh, we've decreased the weight of the final exam by quite a bit just because it's online and uh, we wanted to kind of spread your grades out quite a bit. So um, like I said, we're going to have two tests and those dates are on our Moodle page. Um, and we'll have assignments for each section that we complete. And then the final exam is only worth 20%. The final exam uh, is cumulative, so it will cover all the material that we've um, that we've seen, but it works out to be worth less than a, a term test. So you want to focus on those term tests and and make sure because they're going to be twenty five percent each, um, which is a fair chunk. So um, and then of course the final exam is a little bit fancy pants. So it gets scheduled by the college and then we have it in the final exam time. So we don't know when that is yet. Um, because we're doing online tests, right? Uh, and uh, for the tests, I, I haven't quite decided because it threw people for a loop. So last, last term, we were all kind of learning how should we be doing things. Uh, so what we decided was uh, for the final exam, you would have to have your camera on and I would watch you write the final exam. Um, I, I might do that for tests, so just be aware. Um, but I think I'll probably just let you, you write the test on your own and then just submit it to me. Um, but if I do see some, so of course I'm going to be marking your work, uh, not just your answers. I care about your work. Um, if I do see kind of work that looks a little bit suspicious or I can't figure out what's going on, right? Could be two different things. Um, then I, I reserve the right to contact you and have you walk me through with the work that you did. So just be aware of that. Um, so we'll call that kind of a, a post exam interview. So uh, after a test, uh, if I'm looking at your work and I need you to explain something that you did, then uh, I might contact you. Okay. Some of these department policies are 
not relevant because we're not meeting in person. Um, but uh, we will need a calculator. Any calculator is fine. Um, I've got this one here. Uh, this is a, a Casio. I didn't like it in the beginning, but it's nice because it gives me exact answers, which we'll get into later in the course. But um, so you don't have to figure out fractions. But um, there are also uh, apps that you can use. We're going to be using Desmos quite a bit. So here on my screen, kind of nothing going on here. Um, Desmos is this little graphing calculator. Okay, so it's a free app that we'll be using. Um, so if you do something like x squared, it'll graph it for you. Um, where is x squared less than or equal to four in that range? So it does a, a lot of cool things that we'll, we'll get into, but um, right, that might be worth downloading. And then there's also a, a Desmos calculator, the, uh, the third root of 27 here. Um, so this is the calculator that I'll be using to, to show you on the screen. Um, but if you have a better calculator, that's that's great. Okay, but this one works fine. Okay, and it's just a, a regular calculator, a scientific calculator. Okay, and they're both free, so um, so that's good. We like free. Okay. So um, you're allowed to use a calculator, of course, uh, because I can't really police what you do during a test uh, besides, you know, watching you to make sure that you're working alone um, and not just, you know, working together or grabbing answers off the internet or whatever. Um, this isn't a course in being able to Google answers, right? Ultimately, I want you to be able to solve these problems, right? So um, whether you want to do that or not, uh, I guess is kind of up to you, but uh, the answers are on the internet. I am aware of that, uh, but that's, that's not what we're here for. Um, I'll give you a formula sheet but tests will be open book. So um, you can use it as kind of a, a nice compressed thing to have with all the formulas. Uh, so I'll give you that, but uh, it is open book. So just make sure your notes are nice and well-rounded and, um, and uh, that everything you might need is, is available, right? And just highlight things that you might need for a test, for example. Right. So you can use uh, all your resources, use your calculator, use, uh, use Desmos, which we'll talk more about later, but um, make your own formula sheets. Right. Um, classes started yesterday. This is all kind of boring stuff, but um, January 22nd, which is uh, next Friday. Um, sorry, my calendar is on the wall over here. Um, January 22nd is the last day that you can kind of switch without any penalties. Uh, and then we have reading break, family day and the week of family day. So February 15th, 16, 17, 18, 19, no school. Uh, March 12th, is the last day to withdraw with a W. Now, uh, if by you know March 10th, you sit back and say, hey, I don't think I'm gonna pass this course, right? Uh, you are better off withdrawing with a W because a W doesn't count uh, towards your GPA, okay? So I don't know if, if people know that or uh, maybe it's your, your first year, and uh, but sometimes it is better to just withdraw with a W. You don't get any money back. I think before January 22nd, you might get some money back. 
Um, but up until March 12th, you're allowed to withdraw and it doesn't come up as a fail on your transcript. And, and that can be really important, right, strategically. We get an Easter break this term. It's been years since we got a break uh, for Easter. So, uh, so that's kind of fun. It's usually just kind of screwing up the final exam time. Then we don't want a break. We want to just get it done. But um, April 2nd and April 5th, those are holidays, so no school. Uh, we don't meet on Mondays and Fridays, so it doesn't matter to us, but uh, for your other classes. Um, and then April 16th, then we're all done and dusted. And then, of course, our final exams finish on April 28th. Now, uh, of course, we have all these uh, academic integrity policies. So, uh, and because we're not writing a test today, uh, I'm not going to spend time going through that. But uh, before we write any sort of test, I will um, make sure that you know what is cheating, right? Working with someone else for a test. Um, I encourage you to work with other people for assignments. Um, if you can, if you want to, it's kind of annoying if you, if you are on your own, uh, but for assignments, definitely work together, talk about the problems that you're working on, uh, share what you're finding with each other. That's fine. Uh, don't just do someone else's homework. Uh, that would be a violation, right? So that would be uh, cheating, of course. Um, but for tests, right, you have to work on your own. It's your time to show me exactly how much you know um, and what, how I approach tests is uh, as long as you're improving, right? So, so if test one just really didn't go well, the material was hard, um, maybe you didn't have time to study or whatever, as long as you're improving, right? I can shift the weights. I can shift some of the weights, not all of the weight, but some of the weights, I can shift it forward. So as long as you're improving and you're doing better, we can work with that, right? So, uh, so the tests, I want you to think of them, okay, this is my chance to show, uh, to show Emily me um, how much I know, right? How much I've learned, uh, where I'm at, right? And so uh, that's how I want you to think about tests. Okay. Uh, but like I said, before we have an actual test, we're going to go through and make sure that you know, okay, this is cheating, this is cheating. Um, basically, you're allowed to work on your own. You're allowed all your resources uh, except the internet. Right. Okay. Uh, also, because this is kind of a weird time that we're living in, right? I want you to, to be aware that there is uh, accessibility services. So if you're finding that, uh, you know, you might need more time for exams, of course, you have to have a reason. Um, maybe you have uh, a hard time reading or, or something like that. Uh, you can talk to accessibility services and, and see if there's anything they can do for you. Uh, but also, kind of more importantly, there's counseling services. So uh, if you're having a hard time, then reach out to them. And uh, you can reach out to me, but I'm not really qualified um, to talk to you about, you know, personal life things. Um, but you're welcome to reach out to me. Uh, but there are counseling services and they're hired by the college, so you don't have to pay them. Um, so just be aware that there are all these resources available to you. Okay. Okie dokie. Let's see here. Let's go back to our notes. I feel like there was another thing that I wanted to say. Um, <clears throat> 
Maybe I'll just make a note here. Oops, if I can. You will need a calculator. Try, uh, try the Desmos. calculator app, which is free. Yeah. I'll say as well as the Desmos graphing calculator app. which is also free, of course. Mm -hmm. So I'll be using Desmos just because it's, you know, clean uh, and it's on my screen so I can share it with you. All right, so you will need a calculator. I uh, will figure out the WebAssign. I guess it's not working, that's okay. Um, can't win them all on the first day. So, um, all right. Are there any questions before we get started? So uh, usually I, I like to be cool and not do any material on day one, but to try to get the test one just before the reading break and not after reading break, we have to cover some material today. Uh, so we're gonna just talk about some terminology, some, um, but just so we're speaking the same language, right? So, so if I say a fraction, right? So that you know what I mean when I say a fraction, um, a rational number, things like that, right? So, uh, so we're gonna establish some terminology today and that's pretty much it. Uh, but are there any questions before we start with the material? Awesome. Seeing none. Great. I'm sure I'll think of random things. Uh, can be a little bit ah, scattered sometimes. Uh, that's okay. All right. So section 1.1 is on real numbers which sounds strange, um, right? Real numbers, real numbers. There are imaginary numbers. We're not gonna talk about them, uh, but there are imaginary numbers, which is weird. It's when we take the square root of a negative number. Uh, for in our realm, we can't do that um, because we're dealing with real numbers. So in this course, we're gonna deal with real numbers. Um, but it, it sounds, sounds weird, right? So what I did, where are we here? Oh. Hey. Go back to our page. So of course, my notes are all set up except for section 1.1 and 1.2, because when I first made my notes, uh, I was trying to figure out what worked. Um, so I'm redoing the section 1.1 uh, and 1.2 notes. So I'll do that today and post them. But uh, for each section that we do, I'll post a little uh, kind of summary. Now, I try to keep them to one or two pages 1.1 is, like I said, establishing all this terminology and I wanted you to have it available to you. Um, so it's a little bit longer. I think it's three pages, um, right? But I've just pulled important things from the textbook that we're gonna talk about so that you can just reference them uh, and we don't have to spend a lot of time writing it out unless it's super important. Uh, and then what I've also uh, done is I've put little problems for us to work through 
Um, probably not all, all of them. One or two is what we'll do. And then um, you'll see there's kind of little problems pulled everywhere, right? And so this way we have uh, some problems. We can see some problems. Okay, sets and intervals. Here's a, a kind of a set question. And, um, and then there's some more questions, right? So these are the questions that I want you to focus on um, just for extra practice. Okay. And then what I also do is I'll, I'll give you the solutions to all of those problems. So if you're working through these problems um, for practice, which is a good idea, uh, then you have the solutions. Now, I told you, Stuart, he's kind of a rock star, uh, but he makes mistakes too. So there, I, I have found typos, probably not in the first few chapters. The first few chapters are, are really solid. So, um, but I have found typos in the solutions uh, later on in, in chapter five or six. So, but I'll point those out. Okay. So if you're looking at these solutions, sometimes, you know, they, uh, now I don't have a pointer, but um, let's see here. Can I? No. Uh, they do show multiple steps just to kind of guide you. Uh, they don't show necessarily all the steps, but they do show a lot of the steps in these solutions, uh, which is really nice. So you can use these to follow along. <laughs> okay. So of course, as we're working through stuff, stuff. Uh, um, here, I'll bring this in to notability. Okay, so I can write on it. So what I'll do is I might, you know, steal something like this and bring it into our notes. And so everything that's kind of uh, super important will be in our notes later on, right? Uh, but I want you to have this just to cut down on some writing, right? Kind of uh, the commutative properties, the associative properties, the distributive properties are all things that I expect you to, to know already, but uh, maybe not the names but the concepts. Okay. Uh, so we'll talk about those, but how about we get started? Mm -hmm. All right, so we need to be able to talk about, now there are different types of numbers um, and ultimately, whenever we say a number, we mean real numbers. Um, but we're going to just go through and um, we need to establish some vocabulary. I remember when I was taking, you know, my first few few uh, first year courses, let's say, uh, I would always study the vocabulary uh, as if it was going to be tested. It was never tested, right? And um, so what I want you to, to recognize is I'm not going to test the vocabulary. These are things that I need you to know what they mean. Uh, so that we can talk kind of intelligently about, about numbers and math, right? And so, um, so we need to establish this. Some of it is more important than others, so I'll try to highlight. Um, but first thing we're gonna talk about, oops, let's see right there, is the natural numbers. The natural numbers, are things like, so starting at one, and there's some debate if zero is a natural number or not. We're gonna say no. Um, 
So just think about your counting numbers. So if I asked you to count, you would start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are called your natural numbers. So one, two, three, four. And then here, right, whenever we do these ellipses, so dot, 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 uh, it just means it keeps going in that fashion, right? And so the natural numbers, is denoted by a fancy N, but what we have is we have this kind of, uh, oops, I think I need to make my, my pen thinner. This kind of fancy, uh, fancy N, right? So that's the set of natural numbers. Now we haven't talked officially about sets, but we have a pretty good uh, idea. Okay, so the set of real numbers, it's just everything uh, that is a real number. Of course, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we can go all the way to infinity. Now, infinity is not a number, it's, a, it's a, an idea, it's a state of mind. Um, so that's kind of weird, but, um, but this can keep going and going and going and going forever, right? Uh, but that set is called the set of natural numbers and we denote it by a, an N. There's also the set of integers. The set of integers is, uh, is the set of natural numbers including zero and the negative numbers. So they're still whole numbers. Um, so the set of integers is, oops, dot, 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 up to negative three. Let's pick it up, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. And here it gets, a little bit weird because for some reason we denote it with a, a fancy Z. Denoted by this fancy Z, okay, which is the set of integers. Okay. So now if I say, Oh, okay, so you have an integer and you're dividing by another integer, okay? Then what I'm saying is I'm taking some whole number. Now we're going from negative infinity up to positive infinity, right? But we're always talking about whole numbers when we're talking about integers. So uh, take any number, any whole number, and then divide it by uh, another whole number, for example. Um, in fact, that's called a rational number. And you know what? Integers are important, right? It's important to have a good handle on what an integer is. Okay, so I'll highlight that. <laughs> rational numbers is a ratio of integers. A ratio of integers. So I'm gonna write R equals M over N. Now, uh, if it's been a while since you did math, right? Uh, it's all coming back probably, but, uh, or if it was pretty recent, we like to use variables, so uh, letters to represent, you know, any integer m over any integer n, right? So m and n are placeholders for integers. So uh, where m and n 
are integers. And n is not equal to 0. So kind of as a an alert, okay, uh, a fraction We called it a ratio here, but often I'll use the term fraction. So a fraction is something like m over n. Uh, a fraction, and there's more terminology in a fraction, is a numerator over a denominator. And, uh, and often I'll say, you know, the denominator can't be zero because we cannot divide by zero. You can try it on a calculator. Uh, in fact, let's try it. 4 divided by 0, undefined, right? We cannot divide by 0. It's illegal math. So, uh, so we need to keep that in mind. Okay. So a fraction is a numerator over the denominator. I always uh, had a hard time remembering which one's the numerator, which one's the denominator, uh, and that's okay, right? You just need to figure out a way to remember them. So, uh, so I kind of said to myself, okay, well, the numerator is on top because he's numero uno, right? He's number one. So he's on top. And then, of course, the other one, you don't have to remember the other one. It's just on the bottom, right? So as long as you remember where one of them are, you know, where the other one is. So, uh, so it's important, right, and kind of we can't divide by zero because it's illegal math. Okay. Therefore, I don't know, so here, I changed my, therefore, hopefully you guys are okay with that shorthand. Therefore, oh, that doesn't look good. Therefore, the denominator can't be zero. Okay. So that's why we have this, uh, this condition here that as long as n is not equal to zero. Remember, zero is in the set of integers, but we're just saying mm, n, the numerator, can be zero. That's fine. Zero divided by anything is just zero n cannot be zero, right? It can be any other number, any other integer, but not zero. Okay. So those are rational numbers where we're able to, um, to write them as a, a ratio of integers. Okay. Uh, there's also irrational numbers. Irrational numbers, um, are things like, so irrational numbers uh, numbers that can't be expressed as a ratio of integers. Okay. Uh, let's see something like, so for example, try 157 over 495. 
on your calculator. I'm going to use that Desmos app. So 157, here, I want to delete that. 157 divided by 495 looks like uh, 0 0.317171717, .317 and then it's been rounded. Now, I can't get it back. So it is a ratio of integers, right? 157 is an integer over 495, which is an integer. Uh, so this would be a rational number. Let's see, uh, let's see something like the square root of two. Well, I'll make a note here. This is a ratio of integers, therefore a rational number. So now try something like uh, the square root of two. Okay. If you do the square root of two, uh, clear all, the square root of two, 1.41421356.2, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. Uh, and so there's no repeating decimals. If we have repeating decimals, we can usually rewrite it or we can always rewrite it as a rational number. Um, but when there's, uh, there's no repetition, right, or no consistent repetition, I should say, then it's an irrational number. So 1.4, let's see if I can... I wonder if I can copy. No. 1.4. Oops. I got to do it on here. Otherwise, uh, I'll have to flip back and forth a bunch. 1.41421356.2. It keeps going, right? Just because we don't see more numbers doesn't mean that it ends there. You should always assume uh, that unless there's only you know three decimal places, then of course it's cut off. But if you're maxing out the, the number of decimal places on your screen, then it keeps going, right? And so there are a couple of things that I did here just kind of uh, secretly, right? And we're gonna talk about them here. I used the, the curly equals or kind of the curvy equals, which says approximately equal to. Approximately equal to. Okay. Because it's not equal to this, the decimals keep going. Decimals continue with no uh, repetitive pattern. Therefore, it is an irrational number. Okay, that's what makes it an irrational number. Uh, a number that we're probably familiar with is pi, right? Um, so pi spelled pi is a, an irrational number. And we know that it just keeps going and going and going and going. And so uh, when we put pi in our calculator, pi is approximately, and I'll just do it on here. So we say pi is approximately 3.141592. Six 
keeps going forever. Okay. So this, uh, this notion of, okay, well, uh, approximately equal to is going to be really important, especially for me, because I'm a stickler for, uh, I want exact answers. Now, uh, what that's going to mean and what you'll figure out that it means is that instead of using 3.1415, right, this decimal approximation, right, I want it including the pi, right? So we can do things like 2 pi. 2 pi is a number. That's the exact value. If you do 2 times pi on your calculator, right, you'll get 6 point something. And that's an approximation, right? So here, right, this is the exact value. And this is an approximation. Okay. Even when we did 157 over 495, little lag there, 157 over 495, um, that's the exact value, right? And then when we found 157 over 495, was approximately 0.33737373, blah, 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 right? That would be an approximate number, right? So a lot of the time, I'll ask for your answers in exact form. I'll want your answers uh, to be exact. Okay. Most of the time, I will ask for answers in exact form, right? So for example, the one we just did, 157 over 495 is approximately equal to, and let's see here, point three, oops, Three three seven three seven three seven. Two, 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 two. Okay. I want this, right? Not this. So I'll, I'll try to kind of highlight as we go along and we do problems uh, that I, I do want answers in exact form. Okay. Uh, and what's nice about uh, the, the calculator that I just showed you, right? If I have, <laughs> oh, hey, what happened? died. It's dead. That's not good. It was fully charged. What happened? Hey, it's still fully charged. 72%. Not cool. Join a meeting. My meeting, join. Okay. Hey, that is so weird. There we go. Technical difficulties. Classic. I think we're back in action. I think. Um, uh, okay. 
Good. Okay. That is good. I think. Yeah, we're keeping up. Something's happening. Things are blinking at me. I don't know what's going on here. Let's see if it wrote my, it wrote the note. Okay. I do not know why I did that. Let's try again. Uh, can't keep up. Uh, 157 over 495, that's just a nice number. So here, notice that it shows the decimal approximation, but then it also has a box divided by a box. If you hit that box divided by a box, it'll give you the exact answer. Now, sometimes it'll be different from what you entered, right? If you do something like, so I'm gonna clear all. Uh, if you do something like uh, 14, or sorry, 12 divided by three, right? It'll simplify it to four. Uh, but even if we did something like clear all 12 divided, oops, that's one. 12, 12 divided by 16, it'll simplify, right? So 0.75, it'll simplify to three over four. Now three over four would be the answer that I want. That's the exact answer. 12 over 16 is fine too. Some, some profs are, are kind of sticky and want the simplified one, uh, the three over four, but 12 over 16 is fine by me. They're the same number. So let's see here. Okay. I think it's keeping up. It's a little laggy, but uh, okay. So now, first time ever, I'm going to just steal. So, what I do is I just steal this and I bring it into our notes. And then our notes will kind of have everything, hey, that we need. Okay. I'll even make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So we might not know oh, real numbers. Hey, that's the top, that's what this chapter is called. Okay, let me just put this down here. Um, okay, all numbers that we can think of are called real numbers. Remember how I was going through and I was doing um, terminology here, integers are important. Uh, the next one that's really important is real numbers and I almost didn't introduce it. So, Real numbers. Are super important. Okay, real numbers are any number that you can think of right irrational or rational uh, a whole number right so all possible numbers. Any number, uh, actually, I'm going to change that a little bit and say, when we say number, we actually mean real numbers. And real numbers are denoted by a fancy script R, denoted by, oops, let me clean that up. So it kind of has this like double back R, okay? So R, which is, uh, no, this, denoted by R, which is the set 
of real numbers. Okay. And we'll need that later when we um, when we talk about uh, sets more explicitly. Uh, but like fancy R is just the set of real numbers. Okay. The set of real numbers, so R is any number from negative infinity oops, to positive infinity. Okay. So the two, uh, the two kind of terms that I need you to to have in terms of numbers is the set of integers and the set of real numbers, right? Those are, are heavy hitters, okay? Also that terminology about fractions is going to be really important, right? We're going to talk a ton about fractions. No one likes fractions, but we have to deal with fractions. So we need to know what a numerator is or what the numerator is and what the denominator is and also that we can't divide by zero. That's gonna be really important going forward. So uh, let's just briefly talk about some of these properties, properties of numbers or uh, kind of, you can think of it as properties of math, right? Uh, we have the commutative properties which work for uh, addition and multiplication. Now, what I need you to, to kind of think about is subtraction is just a special case of addition, right? If you're adding uh, two numbers, A and B here, for example, right? If you wanna do A minus B, technically what you're doing is you're doing A plus negative B, right? You're just adding the negative. Now you have to be really careful because uh, these properties only work for addition and multiplication. And again, um, division is just a special case of multiplication, right? Division is uh, A over B, for example, right? But that's really A times one over B. And okay? so we'll, we'll get there. We're gonna deal with fractions later, but uh, it's just kind of, um, kind of something to think about, right? Subtraction is just a special case of addition and multiplicate or a division I don't know if I said that right. Subtraction is a special case of addition and division is a special case of multiplication. If I can't keep it straight, I don't expect you to either, but something to think about. Okay, so what it says, so the commutative properties for addition and multiplication, right, uh, is that if, if we're adding two numbers, it, the order doesn't matter. A plus B is the same as B plus A. Now, what I want you to do is just do a quick check in your, in your mind. Let A be two and B be three. Two plus three is five, okay? Three plus two is five. They're the same. This is not the case for subtraction. Two minus three, negative one, right? Three minus two is positive one. They're not the same. Right? So it only holds for addition and multiplication, okay? Um, a times B is the same as B times A, right? Two times three is the same as three times two. So these are all things that, that we, we know, but it's nice to have them here. And now we're, we're naming them. I'll never call them by their names. I, I might mention at some point the distributive property, right? Um, but I'll never expect you to know these names. You don't have to know these, just the concepts, right? that uh, order doesn't matter for addition and multiplication. Uh, and same thing here for addition, brackets don't matter. That's the associative property. So brackets, remember, uh, remember bed mass, brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, uh, addition and subtraction. Here, I'll put it up here. Recall bed mass, right? Brackets are the first thing you deal with. 
exponents are the second thing you deal with. Division and multiplication are actually on the same level. Remember, they're just special cases of each other. And so division and multiplication from left to right. So in the order that they appear is how you deal with them, which isn't quite clear from bed mass, but that's okay. And then addition and subtraction is the last thing you deal with, right? Uh, addition and subtraction also from left to right. So the associative properties, right? A plus B, because we have brackets here, oh, because we have brackets here, uh, we would do A plus B first and then plus C is the same as A plus B plus C. So you would do the B plus C first and then add it to A. Uh, and there's examples here on the side, right? Same thing here. So for addition and multiplication, the brackets uh, don't really matter, right? It's not until you get to the distributive property, and this is the one that I might call by name at some point. Uh, the distributive property is just if you have uh, some value outside of brackets and you're either multiplying or, uh, or sorry, adding or subtracting inside there, um, you'd have to bring this value inside, right? So you distribute this A onto the B and then onto the C. And then you can keep going, right? You can have more than two values inside these brackets, right? But it works either way. So if you have the A on the left-hand side or the A on the right-hand side of the brackets, doesn't matter, right? It just gets distributed inside those brackets. Uh, and that's gonna be really important and we'll work on that. Um, later on. So uh, let's see here. Before we go, I want to just bring these values in so we can do one quick example. Otherwise, it feels like we didn't do anything, but then I'll let you go. Um, so we've done a lot today. Me blah blah blabbing. Um, let's start kind of nice and slow. We'll do number 23. So the question says use properties of real numbers to write the expression without parentheses. So what I want to do is I want to use the distributive property right, to write it without parentheses, so without brackets, uh, which is what we have here on the right-hand side, right? And so we've got three times x plus y. Well, this three has to, oops, some, for some reason I keep going to the eraser instead of the pointer, I don't know. So this three has to go and multiply the x and the y, right? And so you get 3x plus 3y. Okay. Now, I want you to, to try the rest of those, but uh, let's just do, we haven't talked about negatives, but I, I suspect you are aware about negatives and you, you know what negatives are. Um, so you can kind of deal with that. But let's do 28 together as well, just before we go here. So here I've got 3a times b plus c minus 2d. So the distributive property um, works on addition or subtraction, right? What I need to remember is this whole thing, 3a gets multiplied on each of these terms, okay? And then I might have to expand further. So treating 3a as one thing, you're gonna have, and 
just uh, to remind myself that 3A uh, is one thing, I keep it in brackets. You don't need to. Uh, by this associative property, right? The brackets don't actually do anything. Um, but it's to remind myself that, hey, this is one thing. So 3AB plus 3AC minus, oops, sorry. Let me be proper here. Technically it's plus 3A times negative 2D. Now, whether you wanna have uh, pull this negative out front immediately, that's fine, right? We haven't talked about negatives yet, but I assume that you're kind of okay with negatives, um, right? Or technically you're doing plus 3A times negative 2D, okay? So this here is, uh, we applied the distributive property Now, to deal with something like 3a times b, well, 3a times b is the same as 3ab, right? Because uh, 3a times b is the same as 3 times ab. <laughs> Throw myself off with all these different letters. Okay, so here I'm going to write this because the goal is without brackets. Right, and so here I've got 3AB plus 3AC and then plus negative, so three times negative two is negative six and then A times D just stays A times D. So negative six AD without brackets, right? Adding a negative becomes subtraction. So that's what I mean by a special case of, um, of addition. Right. So this is the associative property. And you don't need to walk me through uh, which properties. I just want to highlight that we're just using these things. And then finally, 3AB plus 3AC minus 6AD uh, negatives. Okay. So what I encourage you to do because uh, WebAssign is acting up. Um, well, first of all, any questions about that before I shut it down? Awesome. So we'll keep working on it. Um, so what I want you to do, because WebAssign is acting up and, and therefore I can't show you where the ebook is, uh, but it, once you're in WebAssign, there, the ebook is there. You just have to scroll to the bottom, depending on if you're on an iPad or, or, uh, or on your desktop uh, or on a laptop, it, it kind of moves around. Um, but it is there, so you will find the ebook. Um, as part of it. So I don't think you'll be able to read sections 1.1 and 1.2, but have a look through those notes that I posted, these ones here, because we'll just keep working through these. Uh, and then um, it's the beginning of the term, so everyone's feeling like, yeah, I'm going to be on top of things. And maybe you'll stay that way. Um, but maybe work through some of these problems, check against the solutions. And like I said, I'll, I'll post the 1.2 notes uh, later today. And then you'll have those as well. But I'm just stealing from the textbook anyways, so don't tell on me. I actually don't know if I'm allowed to or not. Probably not. Um, okay. Uh, oh, um, oh, the little pencil is just from the textbook. So you can ignore the little pencil. Uh, you don't have to do any of them. They're just for practice. Um, 
but typically the little pencil one, if you go back into the textbook, the actual textbook, uh, they will have problems that are very, very similar. So for me, I always like to have a problem that I see and then I work through a similar one uh, just to kind of make the connections. So you can work backwards that way uh, for the pencil. There is an example that's very similar in the textbook, but you'd have to go into the ebook. Cool. But for these notes, you can just ignore them. I'm just not a very uh, clean copy and paster. Awesome. Okay. I'll stick around if you have any questions. Uh, but if not, I will see you guys on Thursday, eight o'clock. I screwed up. <laughs> see ya.